How the heck are you guys? My name is Fastidious. Welcome to my channel and welcome to day 29. 29 in the free to play series. We're almost there, baby. Um, how do we want to proceed here? Well, it is Sunday evening. We had a long stream today. We've put out three videos today. This is the third or fourth one I'm filming, but this will be for tomorrow. Um, I think we do a week in review. We haven't done that, I guess, since last week. I think it'd be an appropriate way um, yeah, to wrap this one up. I've had a very busy week. I hope you guys have had a lovely week. Um, the progress is obviously different now. We are at the week, I guess we're now technically at the start of week five, aren't we? So I guess 28 would have been the last day of week four. So let's just catapult on in. However, let's start with some summons. Now, why am I doing that? Well, we have a little tiny bit of time left uh, with the uh, really special thing going on with the 2X by 10X, um, including Hatset, Cetrum as well. And I, I wouldn't even mind the Laurel. Um, we have a handful of summons, not too much, but I say let's risk it for the biscuit. I'm very close to pity. However, I do not think we will be hitting pity in these summons. So I've already completely mentally, emotionally, and spiritually prepared myself to get nothing but blues, except for the one lovely gold summon in which we have. Um, so we've got three normal summons, and then maybe we'll rip a 10 pull. My plan here is we are gonna do the divine pull. If we don't get gold there, we'll do three blue pulls. If we don't get gold there, uh, we will do a 10 pull. Um, is this wise? I don't know, but we've been progressing really well as you see, as you will see when we do our check-in and I've, I've got the itch. I figure why not? And I also kind of wanted to do some pulls just off stream, relax, um, without further ado. Whew. I've, I've only pulled like four of these ever, maybe five. Uh, these ones still make me nervous. Um, all right, come on, come on, baby. Wait a second. Oh my God, that's gold. No way. Is it Hatset? Okay, it's Ezrin. Um, yeah, everyone was memeing me in the comments saying we were gonna get Ezrin, uh, and we did. Um, and that doesn't disrupt our pity, at least, it was on gold. Ezrin isn't bad, guys. I've been hearing rumors that he is getting um, a rework. We actually bumped up to rank three there in Arrival of Heroes, so that's pretty nice. Um, he is just straight up and out. I guess let's do a quick little review of his kit. Um, it is nice, he's the first legendary healer on our account. So he's an attack-based uh, healer. Um, so, to, to me, in a lot of ways, that is inferior to HP-based healers. I think if you're going to go with an attack-based healer, you should see a lot of utility, a lot of support in the kit, um, which I do not think we're going to find here. But, I, I mean, he puts up some big heals. I've, I've been seeing a lot of, I mean, people have been pulling him all weekend, so I've been seeing a lot of him going around. So we got attack-based heal. It's just going to be based off his max, uh, the max HP of the target and the caster being Ezrin, Ezrin's uh, attack. Uh, so basic, very basic, basic, I guess appropriately so. We'll skip the ult for now. Uh, passive, hero can cast Verdant Rejuvenation and Enlightened Breath on allies beyond his attack range, albeit with healing effects reduced by 60%. So the first time I read this, I thought it was saying on all allies beyond his attack range, and just saying, I think he's saying if there's no allies to heal, like there, there are either no allies or all the allies in his, in his attack range are fully healed, he will move beyond it. So that is very, very cool and very unique. Uh, it does have a bit of a penalty, but it is what it is. And I guess, so this is a reduced by 60%, uh, and you can chip away at it and make it a little better as you get skill ups into this passive if you choose to skill them up. So this can only be 40%, so they get 60% of the maximum heal they would have gotten otherwise within his range. Then we have Enlightened Breath, so this is an auto. When any ally's HP, this is kind of what makes him cool, I think. When any ally's HP drops below 30%, immediately grants a 200% attack-based heal. Um, he's got very high base attack, as I'll show you guys in a second, uh, so solid. This effect can be triggered one time every 40 seconds. Uh, and you can get that down to 35 seconds. And this can be a really monstrous 260% heal. Um, and these healing uh, moves usually have nice multipliers. Uh, or at least the, I, the way that the scaling, of obviously the multiplier we know is 260, but the way that scales into the actual heal seems to be very strong. I've seen some really big heals uh, out of him for sure. I think we still gotta hunt and find what we think the most appropriate content is for him, but I'm certainly not dis disappointed. I will say our account is a bit stacked with healers, um, so, yeah, you can, you can tell. I'm not over the moon about this, but it could have been worse. Um, and finally, let's check out the ultimate. Grants a 220% attack-based heal. This can go up to an extra 80, so it can be 300% attack-based heal. Also, so he has some really monstrous single-target heals he puts out. And also grants, the hero, grants them the hero's talent effect, lasting for four seconds. Uh, and this talent effect is damage taken at time will not exceed 60% of max HP, which is really cool. So you can't get like big boomed, one-shotted, anything like that. The skill cost can go down all the way to 500, so it's fairly accessible. It is an auto, uh, which will have its pros and cons. 
He's super usable, but then again, it like, you know, a legendary healer that isn't the best. It's hard to get excited about it, but a very cool design at least. And I'd be curious to see if the rework is coming, what that is gonna look like. Um, so I'll just quickly show the base stats because he does have really crazy base stats. Uh, 5493, four, 5493 base attack is really, really significant. Um, I wonder if there's a healer with a higher base healing multiplier relative to that stat. Um, HP is solid. Uh, I mean, this HP is more than like HP based healers, at least epic HP based healers. Um, so I think you can make him put a little tankiness on him. Uh, standard uh, revival time. He's got a fairly low attack interval. Um, he's fine. You know, the problem is, the problem is honestly for me, especially being a free to play with legendaries, if they're not awesome, you know, like if they're not like arrogance or something, it's really hard for me to motivate myself to use my skill ups on them because skill ups are really so hard to come by. Um, and this is the kind of champion that I think you really need to put skill ups into. You know, bringing uh, this down from 550 to 500, like one, by 111th or whatever that is, that's significant. Bringing this heal up 80%, uh, so basically bringing it up by like over 33%, that's really, really significant. Um, and then you kind of miss out on that because this is, I mean, at least for the very, very, very foreseeable future, it's a champion we want to skill up. So that's kind of the problem I'm always encountering with legendary champions and why a lot of times I'm, I'm yelling for a Pyros or something or a Iona before I'm yelling for maybe legendary equivalents. Um, but I will say let's keep ripping. Uh, we're, we're in the mood, right? Let's do it. Pity's alive and well. Okay. This is what we expect. Halder, guys, if you haven't checked out Halder's kit, I don't blame you. Uh, moving on. I keep feeling like I'm seeing something. Oh, that one was purple. Come on, give me somebody. I was really hoping, I just want Laurel, man. Laurel would really help me cheese through a lot more content. I need that rage regen. But that is an A2 gluttony for us. Uh, once I get gluttony A5, which hopefully takes a while, I'm not in any rush to get him A5. But once I do get him A5, uh, I think I'll build him out and see what he's all about. I, I like, I'll, I'll show you guys actually very quickly. Uh, so Gluttony does uh, mostly his damage based off of max HP, which is quite, his own max HP, which is quite unique. Um, he's got a little bit of a heal effect as well. If you look at his awakenings, so it doubles the effect of Varen Growth, which is his, uh, if I'm not mistaken, his passive ability. Uh, then a little extra HP, doubles the damage of Gnaw, which I believe is his ultimate ability, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. Uh, so that's pretty relevant, so I guess we're getting closer to that. Then we have minus two costs, which is super relevant, so that makes him a very cheap fighter at I believe it will only be 14 costs. And then this, required attacks minus one, so then all of a sudden this Gnaw, or excuse me, this max smash, it's gonna be triggering like one in four attacks. I think once you've gotten that and you combine it with the double damage and not and the reduced skill cost, I think now you're, you start looking at a relevant champion. But I think he does need all those things fold, folded into his kit. So he's someone you can kind of put on the back burner and then if you max him out, decide if you might want to build him. However, he is a fighter in the faction with many of the best fighters in the game. So it's going to be hard for him to, you know, get stage time. Uh, but I mean, happy to pull an epic out of our couple single pulls. Um, another one, pretty cool. We're very hot right now. Another Tazira. So our... Uh, Second to zero in as many second to zero in as many weeks. Uh, maybe it's a sign we should check her out. I don't know. Uh, I'm curious now what her awakenings look like. So it decreases the number of basic attacks required to trigger two strikes by one. Uh, I don't even know what two strikes is because I haven't used her. What is her two strikes? Oh, here we go on the basic attack. Deals 100% damage to one enemy. Triggers two strikes on the next attack after attacking seven times, and so then it becomes six times. Yeah, not dying to build her. Um, Nothing bad about her, but literally nothing about her wows me. I'd be much more excited to just bring my Brienne to six stars. I would have much rather pulled a dupe Brienne. I would love to get an A1 Brienne. Uh, but I think we got to finish scratching this itch, even though we have seen in four pulls, one being divine, of course, we've seen a legendary and two epics. Only one, uh, not even a rare, it was a, it was a, it was a green champion. But I say let's just rip it. Let's, let's, let's risk it. Okay, this, this is bad. This is bad. Well, we're paying the piper there, folks. That is 10 more, or I guess actually 13 more towards Pity. I believe I will be hitting Pity next weekend. Hopefully we make it there a little earlier. But if I've done the math correctly, uh, we should be somewhere in the 170 to 190 range right now. I know that's a decently big range, uh, but no question I think we'll have enough saved up by next weekend to get whatever it is, the remaining 40, uh, 30 to 40 probably pulls that we'll need to get there. Um, so hopefully the 10X is really exciting. We'll probably pull regardless because it's so fun. Um, and we're kind of at that point where we're settling in. So perfect transition, if I do say so myself, into checking in on the account. Let's start off with the Dwarven Association. I still do buy my fodder all the time. I, I never get sick of buying fodder from the shop. 
Um, we actually should quickly do a little bit of that. Yes, we should. Um, so, guys, where to begin? Where to begin? Well, let's start with the, the ugly. We'll do the good, good, the bad, and the ugly version. The ugly is Void Rift. Uh, for anyone that was on stream this afternoon, the stream was very fun. We did a nice account takeover, and then I said, okay, let's try the Void Rift. So we started in the normal Void Rift, uh, and it was feeling very, very easy, much easier than it was last week. So I said, let's just look at hard and see how hard it is. Spoiler alert, very hard. Um, <laughs> however, I did not realize you can only change one time. Uh, it was right there for me to see, but I did not understand. I, for some reason, I was under the impression that you none of it, nothing counted until you actually claimed your rewards. Uh, so I didn't think we were locked into anything, so I was like, let's just try hard. And now we're stuck on hard, and uh, I'll try again later before I go to bed and the week finally ends. But this is very hard. Uh, it is, it lives up to the uh, the hype in a, in a very sad way. Um, it's it's very difficult. Um, so I'll play around with some things. I think I'll do like one massive re-gear uh, where I put all my best stuff on the couple, because you really need magic damage here, so I'll move them, some things over to like Nocturne and Lunaria. Um, and Imani, uh, but I don't have very high hopes. I would say if I could beat this one boss and get to whatever that is 10% through, I'd feel pretty good about myself, but I don't think it's gonna happen. So that is going to be the ugly guys. I will say the bad, um, nothing too bad. I, I, I do kind of want to fill out this little uh, three-pronged archetype. I will say, I mean, the summons weren't good this weekend. We, we straight up hit dupes on literally everything except for the one harpoon we pulled. So that was the one cool pull. Um, so I guess it's the only really thing to mention. Um, I will say something now moving on to good already is uh, today we uh, we did already turn over into day 30. So I was able to quickly do Tide. Um, and then that got us one more Soul Stone. So if you guys remember, we pulled a dupe Dimos uh, a day and a half ago. Then day 85, the way it lined up is we had 85, 86, 87 in Tide, and then the next day was 88, 89, 90, and 85 and 90, so in a two day span, we got two more Soul Stones. So very quickly, our Dimos went from Awakened 1 to Awakened 4. And I'll, not to make people jealous, but just to show off, Dimos has some of the most powerful Awakenings in the game. So his first one, during the uh, effect of Ancestral Presence, which is his ultimate ability, um, he will get a bit of damage restore, and once he's putting out some real nice stuff, uh, He's really restoring his HP. It's very cool. Then we get a little bit crit rate, crit rate on Awake, uh, Awaken 2, which is fine. It doesn't hurt. You want him in a crit build. Then you get Tearing Stack Cap plus 1. Um, so that is very significant. I'll show you really quickly. Um, so Tearing is an ability he has over here. Each consecutive attack against the same target increases damage by 15% for 10 seconds. Stacks up to 6. So it was at 90%. This is when it's leveled up. It starts at 10 uh, but so if you do 15 times 6 is 90, but then once you get the extra stack, now you're talking about, or excuse me, it was at 5. We already got the extra stack, obviously, uh, from the Waken 3. So it was at 75, now it's all the way up to 90. Uh, and when you get him in content like Guild Boss, where he's just hammering away at the same guy over and over and over, it's pretty significant uptime. Once it lasts for 10 seconds, you're already stacking away uh, pretty quickly with the nice attack speed bonus you get by using him as a Nightmare Faction unit, as long as you're using along allies. Uh, so very, very significant. Uh, and then A3, uh, that was A3, excuse me, and A4, you get 5% penetration, uh, so ignoring a bit of defense, that's great. Uh, and then finally, we're hoping to get A5, I guess we'll get it within two or three days from now, I gotta check the Soul Stones. But now, t once uh, Terran reaches full, so once we get all six of those stacks, he's gonna start ignoring 15% of the target's defense. Defense, excuse me. So we're gonna get penetration. I actually think penetration is ignoring uh, physical damage mitigation, which is great, and then we're gonna get just straight up ignoring defense. Uh, so he's he's a monster and he's getting there. So let's just get into more of the good. Let's just catch up on everything. Uh, lots happened in the past week. I can't remember if we already were at Gear Raid 118. I think we actually hadn't gotten there and then we just got there when the week turned over. So that's quite the accomplishment. This is on hard, hard lock. Um, Gear Raid 2 is something maybe a lot of you haven't known about yet if you haven't been keeping up with my streams and my Discord. Um, we cleared this maybe, I want to say day 27, uh, two or three days ago. Um, and this is a great little farm. I've probably done at least, we have the event net live now, the Vault in the Sands, the Gear Raid 2 Oracle Trial. Um, when we've been performing really well in it, I'll show you in a second. Uh, Gear Raid 3, we've not really pushed at all. Uh, I don't remember exactly where we left off. Maybe we're at 14 or something, but 15. I think actually we pushed 215 during last week's Sunday stream. Um, so yeah, this is a, uh, maybe we could push one further. I don't know, but we still really are lacking the marksman. Maybe, maybe we're gonna build that to zero. Um, no, but. By the time we have another tournament coming out for this, it'll probably be in like about two weeks. Uh, I will have six-starred Brienne, and I'm hoping that makes the difference. But for now, I'm quite comfy 
just getting settled here in Gear Raid 2, and there's some really, really nice pieces, you know, the sticks, Night Terror, the amazing Glacier set, which we're hoping to get in a lot of people once we, actually I'll quickly transition, once we get our Abomination. Uh, so Abomination is super high HP, super high attack champion, and like I said, one of the really good things that happened this weekend is we did pull the final Missing Peach Harpoon. Missing Peach, I really can't talk this evening. Missing Peace Harpoon. Uh, so we will be fusing this guy, that should be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, that kind of covers our raid. I will say for AMR, I've been doing some testings behind the scenes, uh, talking with some people, uh, but we're pretty hard stuck on stage 15. I'm thinking maybe once we get Abomination or we bring Volca up, um, I guess we're only six days from Volca now, uh, five and a half days from Volca. Um, Volca meaning Volca on A1, because you get that at Tide 105. Uh, that should make a big difference. Maybe, uh, yeah, add in a Volca, add in an Abomination. Maybe we can do it. This, this is a very high demand for attacking melee units. You really need fighters. There's a reason Salazar's the boss and the emblem here. Uh, that's the kind of that's the kind of hero you're looking to use. Faction trials, no different. Resource promotion, it's it's all maxed out. It doesn't matter. Um, Arena, if you missed it yesterday or two days ago, whenever that came out, we uh, made it to Overlord. So that's pretty fun. Um, I haven't been pushing too hard, as you can see. Uh, but I will tonight put in the battles it takes because I want to make sure we get those top rank rewards. Um, yeah, these chests, I got one of them when we got Platinum 2 last week. Super disappointing, these luxurious chests. Um, I wish they were a bit more luxurious, but getting two of them, I guess, increases our chances of getting something special. And then, I mean, an extra 200 diamonds from if you were Platinum 3, that is significant for sure. And the extra 100 arena coins, that is also quite nice. Um, so I guess we'll just check in on the Lunari event. Uh, so you can see, if you guys have missed it, we've put out many, many pieces of calendar content. We officially, a uh, shout out to Maku. We have an amazing interactive map that allows you to track your shards. Uh, that video came out today. Uh, you can see we're towards the end of the first, I guess, mini chapter of it, where we're gonna finish up uh, the Corridor of Glory and the Brave Conquest, the first two events we had. Uh, those are well in the past for us. Um, I will say, Corridor of Glory, I do still need to max this out within, uh, whatever, a day and a half or something. Uh, to get those final crystals. Brave Conquest was very easy, because like I said, actually good transition. Uh, through the Oracle's Trial, we were pushed quite hard into Vault in the Sand. Um, so this guy might catch us, but we'll get first or second. Uh, I'll probably keep an eye on this, because I would like to win this, and I do want to keep farming. Uh, it's all Mythic gear. Um, I will have a video coming out about that in like two or three days. I've been gath gathering a lot of data uh, between me and other uh, community members' uh, runs, and it's 1000% confirmed at this point that even though it says they can drop legendary gear, they only drop mythic gear. And for my uh, calculations so far, it's decent, decently generous rates on double drops even without the privilege card. Um, so pretty good stuff so far. And then you saw Arrival of Heroes, we did bump up a bit. Um, so shout out to Ezrin for, I think we were down in like 7th, 6th or 7th place. So Ezrin and then the epic pulls bumped us all the way up to 3rd place. So it would be really exciting actually, if we could pull off these 5 shards, and we can pull off in Vault in the Sands, the max, the max shards. We only need 40 extra once you max out everything else, um, which I don't know if we'll be able to do with Arrival of Heroes, but if we could do it, we'd already have 15. So we only need 25 to pick up through many, I think we'd have four more tournaments to pick up 25. Uh, so if we could just like win one, one or ideally probably two, and then you just get third place podium in the other ones, I think that would make it, right? That would be 30. Um, so that could be really nice. Um, I think decently fine place to wrap it up, folks. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying all the content. Um, I hope you see, I'm really trying to put in the work. I'm quite exhausted. Uh, the traveling made things a lot harder. It's, you know, it's, it's hard to put out content every day, but it's a lot harder when like there's 10 to 12 hours of traveling in between and then you have to deal with the jet lag and then the family responsibilities and so on and so on. I want to also address the bookshelf in the room, not the elephant. But uh, my green screen's over there on the floor. I tried taping it up, it fell again. I'll try to find a better solution for tomorrow, but it's quite late at night, and I just want to get things filmed and finished. Uh, all right, without any further things to say, I have been fastidious. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Fastidious.